we're now two and a half years into a major investment in video. We've actually supported video on the platform for a long time, but it was a couple years ago we realized that with the rise of connected TV, uh, the shift from traditional linear TV to OTT to IPTV, we needed to build a platform that was really ready for video in 2020. And so we basically started from scratch and we rethought our entire platform for video. And that's starting to pay off. In Q4, we signed three of the biggest media companies in the world, so three of the largest video or TV publishers really, who are starting to figure out that they need a partner that can do connected TV, IPTV, that can do you know, set-top boxes, can do OTT as they build those apps, who can really handle the full spectrum, as well as doing you know, regular mobile or, or, or desktop video. Um, and these are premium publishers who want to work with a partner that has a deep commitment to a premium marketplace. And so if you think about us as a marketplace, high quality content, nothing mislabeled, no trying to sneak in banner video or, or outstream in as, as true video content. And if you're a buyer, which is of course who we care about the most because they have the money, you know that if you're buying video from AppNexus, you're buying directly from a publisher who produces real quality content and you're not going to get ripped off. We're going to charge a very low take rate half of what the other video SSPs charge. And that enables us to open the door for a huge amount of spend. The cool thing is it's working. So I think January 2017 to January 2018, our video spend was up 260%. So we saw this explosion of, of our video marketplace. Um, we're now one of the largest video platforms in the world. And with all these big brands, these logos that we signed in Q4, that's just gonna continue and those are actually driving a ton of success into 2018. So we're feeling really optimistic about our, our video business. And I think the exciting part is we're seeing more and more opportunities to operate in linear as well. So a year ago I said, there's no way we're gonna touch linear, but I'm increasingly of the opinion that these worlds are converging so quickly that there's actually a huge opportunity. Some of our biggest buyers are asking us to go integrate with the linear TV platforms. And I think if we do that, we can provide a holistic way to help these brands transition from linear to digital and help curate a digital environment that feels a lot more like TV in the sense of high quality content where you know and trust the channels or the, or the producers you're working with. Um, it's gonna be a much tighter, brand, more brand safe environment. And I think our role really is to provide an alternative for Keith Weed or Unilever to a platform like Facebook or YouTube where there's really no way to know What's gonna happen next? You know, can you really afford to have your ad appear next to somebody who's you know, tasering rats on his balcony? That's just not good for your brand. I don't care what brand you are. Like, well, maybe if you're a taser brand. But the reality is, that's not where you know, brands have made their money and succeeded for the past 50 years. It's high quality, well-produced, long-form content. And that's the future of video for the industry and also for AppNexus. And, and just briefly about linear, how, does, how do you see that in terms of your work in the linear TV space? Well, it's always going to be different to do broadcast than to do addressable one-to-one -one, you know, programmatic. Um, where the worlds are converging is that we're having more and more capabilities, especially through IP and through set-top boxes, to sort of bridge that gap. We can do insertions you know, for more and more content um, down to the set-top box, like the household level which is exactly the same as what we can do for CTV. So if you've got a Roku or an Apple TV, that's not that different than having a set-top box. So anything that's video on demand is gonna look very much like connected TV. So once you realize you're already going to the point where the consumer has no idea it's not linear, the bridge to a more traditional broadcast insertion is really a question of how do you unify reporting? How do you tell the story of, you know, frequency or, or overlap or opportunities. What I'd love to do is say, we're gonna hit everyone we can with a big, broad, targeted linear buy, and then we're gonna figure out the households we couldn't target in linear, and we're gonna go get them through other channels. We really wanna find the cord cutters. You can't just operate in linear today, or you're gonna miss out on a huge swath of the population. Now, I know we're here in the US, but in other markets, in the Netherlands, like, TV's dead. It's gone just completely off a cliff. So imagine you're a linear TV buyer. You're, you're missing out on almost the entire digital first audience there. That's gonna be the US in three or four years. So I wanna be ready. And I think to be ready, we have to start helping those companies transition to programmatic 
and then to start shifting more and more to an audience-targeted model.